So around four and a half years ago, I came here and had my very first heroic mushroom dose experience. And for those who aren't aware, the heroic dose was coined by Terence McKenna, which states that you need to take five dried grams of psilocybin mushrooms in silent darkness. Now, I didn't do it in silent darkness, I did it in nature, but <laughs> what I didn't know is that you have to be very careful of the species that you take, because Terence McKenna was talking about the cubensis species, whereas I took the psilocybe subarigonosa, which is a lot more potent. So basically what I took was probably equivalent to, who knows, eight, even 10 grams or beyond. And this was an interesting time in my life where I was just starting to get into psychedelics. I just had my first ayahuasca experience, which completely blew my mind open. And I started walking this spiritual path, at least more seriously. And about six months after this ayahuasca experience, which is when I started this whole YouTube channel actually, I decided I needed a bit of a reset and I wanted to continue doing the deep work, right? So I listened to people like Joe Rogan and Terence McKenna and they're recommending this heroic dose. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna see what this thing's all about. And just before I begin the story, I just wanna let you guys know that I recorded this video around four years ago, but the reason why I deleted it was because I wasn't balanced enough and I was a little bit too reckless and yeah, being, being too biased towards the mushroom experience. And the reason why I say this is because I get a lot of people emailing me or even just comments that I see in general from kids saying that they're gonna do this heroic dose in silent darkness. And like, yeah, of course, this can be a transcendent, amazing spiritual experience, but it can also be a really dangerous one that can completely shatter your mind and can cause you to have a psychosis or derealization, depersonalization, and the list goes on. And I'm not here to give you guys a scare story, in fact, this, even though this is a cautionary tale, it's also a pretty funny one as well. And it just goes to show that if you go into the psychedelic experience with arrogance and ignorance, then it's not so uncommon for psych the psychedelic gods to bitch slap you back into reality. And this is that story. So about four and a half years ago, like I said, six months after my ayahuasca experience, I thought that ayahuasca was the most intense psychedelic that there ever was. So I came into this thinking like, yeah, I can handle it, five grams, like I've done mushrooms before. I'm sure this is not gonna to be too intense. So I took 5.5 grams of sub mushrooms, did the lemon tech, and then I drove down to this beautiful area that you see right now. So I drove my car, took the mushrooms, and started walking towards my spot. And usually mushrooms take about half an hour, give or take, to kick in, but this kicked in like, five, 10, 15 minutes max. And I'm like freaking out a little bit because it's like, oh shit, I didn't expect it to kick in this quick because I wanted to go to my secret spot away from people. And here I am walking on the path and I see slight distortions, a bit wavy, like the trees breathing, the classic vibrant colors, a little bit of changing hue, that kind of stuff. And I'm like, oh shit, but if I can get the hell out of here. So I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. <laughs> While the visuals get more intense, more intense, more intense. And then I'm like, fuck, you can do it, Tom. You can make it. So I, I reached my spot. I'm puffed out. I'm already tripping. This is the start of my trip, by the way. And it's so funny because like I, how unprepared I was. I remember bringing a journal and a pen thinking I'm going to be like in this state of mind where I'm going to be able to write words, which is so ridiculous. Uh, and I did also have my girlfriend, Yesenia, on standby just in case. You know, it's always good to have a trip sitter or at the very least have someone on standby. And this is what I did, because you never know what can happen and it's always good to have a SOS button and someone to come to your rescue. Ah, this is why I stopped recording in nature. <laughs> so I'm sitting at my spot, it's starting to get a bit more intense. I remember this old couple walking past, just seeing me lie down, waiting for these mushrooms to really kick in. They're like. You right, mate? I'm like, yeah, 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 I'm good, I'm good. And then I just kept walking. And then this is when the mushrooms really, really started to kick in. And this was no longer the small mushroom dose which I had experienced in the past, where you're just having, you know, nice colors and having fun and laughter and all that kind of stuff. This was like, you know when you get, you feel the presence of something, uh, something else. I don't want to use the word alien, but just, I felt the presence of something. 
And then the visuals started to kick in way more. I started to go like that classic Google Deep Dream visuals where like fractals and patterns and breathing and just inexplicable visuals. And, you know, you'll hear the word ineffable a lot. And it's true, even though I do find it a bit of a cop-out because I think you should at least try to articulate your experience. But when it does come to a psychedelic experience, it's almost impossible to really describe what you're going through, especially in the higher doses. So the experience kicking in, I'm going through like really deep introspection and thoughts, but a lot of anxiety and fear actually. Uh, I think it's because I was by myself and it was also winter as well, so the cold didn't really help. And it's very common for mushrooms to fluctuate your temperature. So I was getting like really cold and then like hot and sweaty and clammy and like, you know, yawning a lot. It's very similar to ayahuasca actually, which is really interesting because I've been saying for years how similar mushrooms and ayahuasca is. And not too long ago, there was a scientific discovery basically finding that mushrooms have an MAO inhibitor, making it quite similar, at least structurally, to ayahuasca. And there's been so many times where I've been in ayahuasca space thinking that I'm having a mushroom trip and vice versa, right? Having a mushroom trip thinking I'm in the ayahuasca space. And anyway, so this experience was like just getting more intense. It was basically uh, just as intense as most of my ayahuasca experiences, which completely shocked me, right? To me, again, this is mushrooms, right? It's not supposed to be this intense. It was at this point where I knew that I wasn't going to make it by myself. <laughs> so I texted Yesenia and I remember going on my phone. And of course, technology is like super weird, like this alien. It's like, it's just a really weird experience. And I'm like going through my phone trying to find Yesenia to tell her to come pick me up. And the screen looked like I was looking into this interdimensional portals and the letters were literally floating out and like breaking apart. And I'm like, <laughs> it's like you're in a time limit, right? Because the mushroom's kicking up and it's just going to get worse to the point where I'm probably not going to physically be able to go on my phone. So I'm like, oh, go to Yesenia, come pick me up. <laughs> and she's like, now? I'm like, yeah. And then, what did you say? Like, come, come, come here. But I remember you texting me and it says something like, like, like I messed up, I need you, I need you here, I need you here now. And I was like, now? And you're like, yeah. And I was like, I'm on my way. And I drew a little car with a little a like, whoosh <laughs> outside it to say, vroom. Because I knew you needed something to make you feel happy and be like, okay, It made me laugh. It made, yeah, it made yeah. it less serious. It's yeah. like, vroom, I'm coming home. <laughs> Right. I'm pretty sure I was home because I was like, okay, I yeah. have to leave now because I knew it was going to take me like half an hour to get to you. So at that state, I'm like, okay, I just have to make it half an hour, which of course, this is when, you know, that exponential curve happens and it just got way more intense. Yeah. So I'm sitting there going through my trip and I remember going into like communicating with these Native American sort of spirits. Oh, okay. But it's like, you know, when you talk to spirits, at least in that realm, it's not necessarily like English. Yeah, 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 it's not me talking English per se. It's more like Through thought them. waves. Mm. And then I just interpret it as English in my mind. And the, the general feeling that I got was like, these, these, they were like angry and, and upset. Like, what the fuck are you guys doing? What are you doing? You know, like our earth is burning. Like everything is going into hell and destruction. And what are you doing? And I was like, fuck you, yeah, no, no. I was going like through, through like this guilt trip of, you know, like I should do more with my life. <laughs> this just kept going on, going through trances and... I'm not even going to um, bother explaining it because I just sound stupid. I kept walking up the path and I was so just heavy. Like I felt like I was in that gravity machine in Dragon Ball Z and just like every single step that I took, I'm just like, oh, fuck. And then... I could only take like literally maybe three, four steps and then I would have to stop and just <gasps> like, I was like purging, man. It felt, again, very similar to ayahuasca where I was like yawning and spitting. That's why I was spitting a lot. And every time I would yawn, I'd feel this energetic burst just. <gasps> oh, I and remember then, you yawning a yeah. lot, actually. And then I would, I would picture like a, sort of like that, a lion sort of thing. like, <gasps> And of course that sound would be like, like full 3D surround sound with that echo delay. And I was just trying to walk up this path and every two, again, every two steps I had to stop and rest and, and I couldn't even drink water. I remember like having like a sip of water and just like, like physically couldn't be able to do it. And my body, my, 
I don't know, my... It was just weird. It was just like that. How do you feel like your body when you're on mushrooms? High dose. Oh, I can't remember anymore, baby. Oh. Oh. That's why it's good to write this down. I have this on, I have this on video. Uh, yeah, so Whoa. I... And it's everywhere. <laughs> do you still want me next to you? Oh, no, no, that's fine. So at this point, I'm just surviving. And I remember just like staring at the ground and I would see the path which was like full of sticks and dead leaves and then surrounding it was like vibrant bush and leaves and all this greenery. And in my visuals, I saw like the path being like just dead of like bones and black and white and just nothing, just absence of life. And then surrounding it was like this luscious, vibrant green and was beautiful, full of life, expansion and all that. So 30 minutes passed, which of course felt like eternity for me and communicating with deities and spirits and going through my own life trip and like this, like a life review, you know, but also tapping into the collective fear of society and the matrix and authority and police. And I was like getting very scared actually because I was losing my mind, not being able to string a sentence together and yeah, just descending into madness. But I was just holding on by a thread. And then I hear the angelic voice of my girlfriend. <laughs> so I came from this position, gone through my bad trip and demons and the, how fucked up the world is and trances and entities. And then I hear this angelic voice. And the biggest smile goes on my face and hope was restored. And I'm like, I, I can hear her. Her voice was everywhere. And because I was so disoriented, I didn't know which way was up, which way was down, what was left, what was right. I didn't know, like I knew where I was, like I was here in the Dandenong Ranges, but I don't know whether I was walking this way or that way. And then I see you from the distance and oh my God, that, because you know how your emotions get super amplified when you're on psychedelics, especially a high dose, so that hope and love and joy was just like ecstasy really probably even more potent than ecstasy and i run to my girlfriend babe hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Oh. Oh. Hello. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> My love. Oh. And then her. All that love just got transferred into my soul, and I was just so happy and grateful that I had this amazing girlfriend who was there for me. Thank you. Mm. And then. And I remember like staring at your face and seeing like all these like kind of like bacterial cells like yeah just the, cell, the biological cellular level and just staring at you while you just, all these fractals are like coming in and out and morphing it was tripping you out to look at my face how did i look what was my face like <laughs> you were just like <sighs> <sighs> there you go. that's why i brought her along because then she can give you a more <laughs> objective analysis of what the hell went down? So cute. And then, and then after that, what happened? We just, we just chilled for a while. Yeah, we yeah. tried to walk up the hill, but it was just so hard for you to move. You just mm. wanted to chill, so you just needed to be still for a little bit. But it was too full on looking at my face. No, it's too much. I yeah, can't do it. <laughs> because all you could see was just like a little, just like, like the, the under my skin, pretty much. So I sat next to you for a little while, trying to help you to breathe, relax, it's okay. And then I sat behind you and just held you and I was remi reminding you to breathe and I was doing all these little quirks and stuff to make you feel better. Like, like um, what, what were you doing? Oh yeah, like, yeah, go, go, go do it. I was just kind of coming up to make you feel better and just going. <laughs> <laughs> just all around the back of your neck, just to kind of like make all you, the negative energy yeah huh? <laughs> yeah yeah so it would make you feel better like oh it's okay i'll help you i'll help you i'll just 
<laughs> just people listening at home right now is like, you guys are fucking out of your mind. <laughs> but like when you're on psychedelics, like does it, it as doesn't irrational as it, it sounds, yeah, it helps. It, it helps. really does. Exactly. Because it puts your Anything. mind at ease. Because you're basically like a vulnerable big child at that yeah, stage. Yeah, this you is know? true. This is true. But so we just waited around until you could feel better and then we... No, because I remember sitting down there and because it was like really cold, which was affecting my trip even more. Mm-hmm. And then I was going through this whole trip of like, fuck, I'm, go- I'm go- am I going crazy? Or what happens if someone sees me? Like they might call the ambulance and the cops and then... I'm going to get locked up in a mental institution or yeah, there's something like that. I was, I was super, super afraid of strangers. I think you had me. that um, before I got there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going through a little bit, but I think it went worse. Because I remember like you were just sitting at the side and I was just sort of like in my own fetal position going through my own trip and not being able to speak to you. Because mm-hmm. I couldn't say a sentence. No, that's why we just kind of sat there. In silence. Mm. And me just yawning yeah. and spitting. And, and I just held you. <laughs> Because, yeah, you just needed a minute and you were just like... <laughs> Guys, I'm telling you, this was an ayahuasca trip. <laughs> I should make a video on that, actually. Mushrooms versus ayahuasca. Because, yeah, I'm... I'm <laughs> just to pat myself on the back. But mm-hmm. I, I like... I like having proof of me saying multiple times how similar ayahuasca is to mushrooms. And now we kind of have scientific evidence to support that. There's Cause people, proof. Yeah, there's proof now. Because people always compare DMT to ayahuasca, and I've never, like, yeah, I mean, visually, there's some similarities, similarities for sure. Similarities, yeah, but no. No. DMT and ayahuasca is a lot more different than what people may think. Mm. But ayahuasca and mushrooms, whew, Very similar. they're cousins, dude, or brothers or sisters or interdimensional mm. family members, whatever you want to call it. But anyways, one hour passed? Maybe an hour, yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, because I, I, I got it. I get impatient, so I'm just kind of like, okay, like, Are you done let's now? go, like, you can walk, you I'll, can do uh, it, and I was like, I was like, Mr. Burns, oh. I bring you love, and I'm pretty sure at one point you had to, like, hold on to my pants to, like, walk up, and so I was like, it's okay, like, come on, follow me, we can do this, and we just, we had to keep stopping, so it took us maybe another hour to actually get up the hill is that the price for having too much knowledge that your basic functions just fail <laughs> I have no idea. it's weird though isn't it because like psychedelics like you go into a whole other plane of you can tap into the akashic records and get self-knowledge about yourself it but... depends because some people can trip really hard and still have their their functions but yeah true I guess this one, this one just hit me like a ton of bricks. Because yeah. I did also, I forgot to say in the start of the video, I fasted on, and, and I did the tech. lemon tech. Mm. And the most, one of the most you know, potent mushrooms in the world, you know, no biggie. So of course it just, whoopah! Yeah, and I had to go to work the next day, dude. I was working at Vodafone at this time, so I was like deep in that matrix slave job sort of thing. Do I, you I want to say that you worked for Vodafone? I don't or? work there anymore, so I don't give a fuck. Vodafone. Vodafone, Vodafone. Because before say I couldn't that say you it. You worked for a phone company. No, I don't. Again, I don't okay. work there anymore, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, so I was working at Vodafone. And <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Vodafone. 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 Actually, uh, I'm with Vodafone. But yeah, anyways, I was so I was working at Vodafone. So maybe my being trapped in this job would have influenced my trip in some way because a big. A big theme of that that whole trip was like being trapped in the matrix and like you know authority and evil people taking mm. control and destroying the earth and here I am, what am, the fuck am I doing? So I was getting like guilt and shame and fear and and also more. I think it was a bit of a pun- at least that's how I interpret it. It was a little bit of a punishment for being too reckless, too irresponsible, and not respecting the mushroom. Because mm. I, I did respect the mushroom, but not to. To me, it was Not like to, extent, to me, it was like yeah. ayahuasca. That's that's the fucking holy grail of psychedelics. This is the one that you should really take seriously. And mushrooms is like, ah, uh, you know, it's, it's intense and it's a awesome experience, but it's not on that level. After the peak passed, so it would have been maybe an hour or two hours. And Yesenia took me to the car. So I'm walking, 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 <laughs> going out in <laughs> public. An hour of struggling. Yeah, after an hour of struggling, not being able to move, I finally had the strength to at least walk somewhat. And of course, because I'm still tripping, I'm like trying to act sober, but this just makes it worse. Because you're like, wait, how do 
humans act the way you know like you know have you ever had that kind of feeling yeah. <laughs> like how do i how do i act yeah, normal definitely. and it just makes you look like a fucking tripper and we walked to the car and i needed to take a piss and then yesenia's like yeah just go take a piss on that tree of course you know she talked to me like i'm just some normal human being as if taking a piss on that tree is just a simple task see in her mind all i had to do was walk to that tree but in my mind the whole trip up into this point was fellowship of the ring and the two towers and then taking a piss on that tree was like return of the king like me dropping the ring and destroying it in Sauron Mordor that's what it was I was completely disassociated and I went halfway lost where I was and of course there's people around so I don't want to like you know piss in front of like you know an eight-year-old child and then get yelled at and then me have a completely bad trip and I'm just thinking like how I would have looked like just a disabled child not being able to do anything and then I came back for Yesenia and I'm like can you come with me <laughs> can you accompany me on my piss please <laughs> and she did <laughs> I just go to the go to the tree and pee by myself. I need you. <laughs> like it was a simple. You, tried, you, you left me. Like, I, 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 just, I just had to stand there. I didn't even help you or anything. I just had to stand there and be around you. That's all you wanted. But actually, just like observing my behavior on that level dose. Can you just explain to the audience like the difference of how I look on that level dose, like a five gram and beyond mushroom dose, and like a lower, maybe one to three gram dose. Your behavior is very, kind of like a jolly elf. So like you're very a happy. Jolly elf. Yeah, <laughs> like you're very happy. You're very giggly. Um, you're very into like all the colors and the nature and you know like when you see a dog that rubs itself because he's so happy because of a smell or something. It's kind of like that. Like that's. On the that, lower dose? Yeah, on the lower okay. dose. And the higher doses? On the higher dose, you're like, oh man, what have I done? <laughs> oh, whoa, <laughs> this is too much. <laughs> that's you. That's how it felt. You captured the emotion really well. That, pretty, that's <laughs> that's me in, in a nutshell at that, yeah, <laughs> during this stage. But yeah, that's that's usually how you are in the high doses. And then well, I've you, only, well, to be fair, I've only done two higher doses. And both of them were completely unprepared. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> right, yeah, I, rem I remember that. It was fucking crazy. Yeah, so after my piss, go in the car, go to the supermarket. And of course, that was really weird with like the bright fluorescent lights. And it was just like, oh, just kind of settling back into reality. And it was, again, I, I was just very fearful of like the Matrix because I was going... <laughs> I don't know, I just felt really isolated and crazy and that most people just wouldn't understand what I'm going through, of course, which made me feel even more isolated and more kind of like, oh, I don't know how I feel about this world anymore. And then, yes, yeah, so after the supermarket, we went back home, we watched Alice in Wonderland. And I think I told you to turn it off after 20 minutes. Cause that was a terrible idea. I don't know why I thought that watching Alice in Wonderland would be a good idea on psychedelics when in reality, that movie is very... It's very dark. It's, the, it's dark. It's very it's actually, dark. actually, yeah, when you really, really look at it, it's actually I dark see it and as depressing. It's a really bad trip. Yeah, it's a, yeah, basically. And so I stopped watching that. And uh, something that happens actually, because um, this happened a few times, and I don't know the science behind it, so maybe a, a scientist watching this can tell me what's going on, but I had a major migraine later that night, and I've had this on higher doses of mushrooms. And yeah, I guess the, the whole night I was just kind of just just thinking and processing what the hell was going on and went to work the next day and then, yeah, continued on with my life. And I don't want to make it... This wasn't like a traumatic experience which like broke me afterwards. I was actually fine. I was, right? I was fine. Like this, this, this didn't like... Yeah, nah. It didn't negatively affect my mind, uh, at least what I consciously know. So I think it just taught you a lesson, put you in a... Yeah, put me in my place and also, yeah, I, I guess the whole theme of this was just respect mushrooms, mm -hmm. Don't <laughs> be prepared just jump in. and just because you think you're on this spiritual path doesn't mean you, you know shit. 
Yeah. Like, you don't know shit, son. Nothing. So stop pretending like you're doing this deep work. And that's the thing. Like, I generally went into this thinking I'm doing deep work, yeah. shadow work, working on myself. And I even believed that bullshit even six months after this trip. It's only looking back now, four and a half years later, where I don't think it was a negative trip or I regret or... And for sure, I had, yeah, I mean, you can learn anything from any situation. I think at that time, but, because from what I remember, you wanting to do the deep, deep work and everything, you and and you brought your journal and everything. The whole reason you wanted to do it here in isolation was because you thought this would be a perfect place, and you thought that you'd have um, this really just kind of groundbreaking, beautiful, deep work within. Mm. But in reality, it was just like it just took a whole different. Yeah, uh, it was yeah. just chaos and madness. For the most part, because for sure I had glimpses and waves of euphoria and bliss and, mm. you know, what I felt at the time was I was purging out demons and even like, again, what it felt like was I was purging out physical toxins, like sort of like the mushroom squeezing my body like a sponge and all that muddy, dirty water coming out. That's what it felt like. Mm. Um, whether that's the case, Who knows? it's up for debate, isn't it? But yeah, just I guess looking back now, like it was a valuable experience for sure, a humbling experience, and it completely changed my opinion on mushrooms. And I, I put mushrooms like at the top <laughs> because even this experience that I had was nothing compared to what went on, uh, what, six months later or whatever. Looking back on this experience, I didn't actually learn my lesson if you think about it because the next time I took mushrooms I took 7.5 grams in silent darkness <laughs> which was and I'm I'm not even saying this just you know to be dramatic or anything but this the whole story that I've told you was like level one <laughs> yeah, compared to this yeah this was like I'm not gonna tell it here I'll tell it another I'll tell it another day and this was a video that I actually made as well which I deleted just awesome. because <laughs> yeah, it's just because it's I, I don't want to influence kids doing dumb shit because they see someone talk about their profound lessons not everyone yeah. gets profound lessons yeah and the people who talk about their profound lessons they might be bullshitting themselves i was mm. bullshitting myself myself you know yeah, rather you didn't know it at the time. i didn't know it at the time no yeah. again i was genuinely thought that i was like doing deep spiritual work growing as a person but really when i look back it's like i really should just work on the everyday things cleaning my room moving out because i was living at, with my mom at this time you know should have been focusing on moving out or working on my passion building my business just things like stepping out of my comfort zone you know what i mean and i guess you could say this was stepping out of my comfort zone in the most <laughs> extreme way possible but you know what i mean you don't have to go that far i wish i learned my lesson at that point but i didn't because i continued down this route until i really got punished for it and this is not mushrooms and i'm not generalizing because the thing is it's so personal, the psychedelic experience. And even within each person, every time they take psychedelics, it's going to be a completely different experience because you're a different person every time you take it. And I guess it concerns me a little bit how people take these level doses recreationally when, to me, taking a high dose of mushrooms to have fun is sort of like using the most powerful supercomputer in the world to play like Pong or something. You know, and there's nothing wrong with playing pong or tetris on a supercomputer but it's like man the potential that this machine has like i feel like it'd be wiser to i don't know do something more innovative explore more mm. but then again i'm just projecting so you can do whatever you want however just try to be cautious taking these high doses and also before i didn't because i didn't say this at the start with this whole five gram heroic dose thing i interviewed Dr. James Fadiman about it and he shared his opinion so you can check out my podcast if you're interested. The heroic mushroom dose is one of the most irresponsible dumb advices that is treated as wisdom in the psychonaut community. I think it's people are talking a little bit more about it and I'm not even shitting on Terence McKenna because you got to think at that time he didn't know that his message was going to spread across like millions and millions of people. He was just doing like his little small rooms and someone just was recording his lectures and I don't even think that if Terence McKenna was to come back now I don't think he'd agree with 
his heroic dose theory because people tend to forget that Terence McKenna had a really, really bad mushroom trip which caused him to stay away from high dose mushrooms for the rest of his life. So I just find it funny when people spread this like, hey man, you should do five gram in heroic dose in silent darkness, but then you're, you're parroting someone who probably doesn't even agree with that anymore. Well, he's dead, oh. so obviously he doesn't agree with it, but you know what I mean. <laughs> but I'm, I'm even talking like later in his life, I'm sure he wouldn't have agreed with this. And this doesn't mean never do a heroic dose. It's just for most people watching YouTube videos, probably not a, a good idea. This is like, the, the heroic dose is like, it's a shamanic dose. To me, again, it's, it's, you should treat it just as seriously as if you were drinking ayahuasca, you know? And I think as research continues, we're going to learn more about mushroom. Like just now, we've just, again, we've discovered that it's, it's structurally similar to ayahuasca. And who knows, maybe there's a specific diet that you need to follow to really get the benefits out of mushrooms. We don't know. That, again, we don't know. We don't even know what consciousness is, let alone psychedelics. But it's fun to talk about it and share these experiences and learn from each other. So hopefully you learn from my <laughs> cautionary tale or not, but whatever, I, 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 did, I did my part. So I used to feel a lot more guilty about it. Not anymore. We don't want to inspire stupid people to do stupid things. Exactly. Even me saying this right now, because I'm just, I heard people talk about how intense mushrooms is. But even at that stage when I did ayahuasca and I'd never experienced a high dose mushroom, even then people were saying all this kind of stuff. Maybe not mm. exactly what I'm saying, but people were explaining how intense this experience was and I still had the arrogance of thinking, yeah, but how intense could it really be? Yeah. <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Yeah, there's always, yeah. And maybe sometimes we do need to fall on our face to learn our lesson, but it's not necessary. It's, you know, mm. like... Like the saying goes, a wise man learns from other people's mistakes while a fool makes his own. So. I like that one. Mm, thank you. I totally didn't make it up. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else to add? Get some merch. Mushroom quality. <laughs> but anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this cautionary but funny tale. And yeah. Share us your thoughts below and if you, if you have had a heroic dose and what your experience was like. Were you prepared for it? Like, did it completely slap you in the face or was it actually really beautiful? What lessons did you learn? Yeah. What kind of advice would you give to somebody else? Um, et cetera, et cetera. And actually, just one quick thing I wanted to add as well was because I, I, don't, wanna, I don't want people to think that five grams of mushrooms is like this experience because everyone's different. Yep. You might be like some obese, unconscious alcoholic who might be able to take 20 grams of mushrooms and that could be equivalent to like one gram for me. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I remember posting that video and people being like, only five grams? You're a pussy. I did 20. <laughs> and again, if you... <laughs> well done, bro. <laughs> and I, I remember because... And this was like at the start of me joining this psychedelic community. So I just assumed that everyone was like really wise and balanced and just open-minded. Yeah. But this is not the case. <laughs> Unfortunately. Just because you do psychedelics doesn't actually mean that you're spiritual and awakened and no. whatever. Yeah. And sometimes like myself, you might genuinely use these things for self-development mm -hmm. and spiritual growth. But you might fall into a trap of what's called spiritual materialism which is basically the ego using spiritual practices to strengthen itself and you got to be careful with like trying to kill your ego too much because eventually the pendulum will swing the other way there's going to be a shadow backlash and your ego is going to reinforce itself and there's nothing wrong with this because again people think that ego is synonymous with like evil and bad and all this kind of stuff and this was a tough lesson that I had to learn was that the, man the ego it's you it's beautiful. This mm. physical reality is com absolutely divine and amazing. And I think I was using psychedelics in a way to, even though consciously I was using it to face my demons and do deep work, I think in practicality I was using them as escapism. This might not be the case for you. This was just something that I personally had to work through. So it's interesting going back to the psychedelic space after all these years. I'm actually going to Fly to Peru in five days, four days, shit. I'm going to record an ayahuasca documentary, so. 
I'm nervous. Oh. But it's good. Don't leave me. Sorry. <laughs> I'll contain myself. <laughs> um, anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video and got any value out of it and wish to support our channel, then feel free to check out Patreon and you can join our inner circle. We've got an exclusive Patreon Discord where you can have a chat with myself and like-minded individuals who are committed to self-development and integration, which I think is the key here. In my opinion, I think that the actual tripping experience itself is, and I think I'm even being generous here, I'd say it's like 5% of the bigger picture. Really the work comes in the preparation, but even more importantly, the integration, how you process this thing. And mushrooms, particularly I've noticed, takes very a very long time to process more than ayahuasca, some Pedro, LSD, and all these psychedelics that I've done. Again, I'm just talking from personal experience. Sometimes it takes me months before I look back and go, oh, shit, like, you know, I get these jigsaw puzzles mm -hmm. go together. I'm like, oh, okay, that's what that thing was. Yeah. And, and, I, and a lot of it, again, it's not so, like, it, it's hard to conceptualize. Sometimes it might be very primal and visceral and you're just going through your own shit and... It's very personal. Like, there's a lot I left out here. I just wanted to share the general gist of what I went through and share this experience with you guys. But yeah, anyways, if you want to support us, check out Patreon and get some merch or one-time donation on PayPal. But yeah, guys. Anyways, have a good one, and I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.